My name is Jennifer Cabrera. I am the Senior Embryologist Laboratory Supervisor at Generation Next Fertility. I've been here since we've opened, so this June will actually be four years that I've been working here. Um, my role here is um, all aspects of embryology, andrology, endocrinology. I supervise a great, amazing team of people that, um, alongside me, help patients' dreams come true. I wanted to make this video to make it a little bit more accessible and easier for patients to understand their updates when they receive it from the lab um, in regards to embryo grading. We believe that knowledge is power here at Generation Next and we do not want our patients to be left in the dark. So we feel that education and understanding our updates um, are super important and we don't want you guys to be confused. Embryo grading in a nutshell is a way for you to, in layman's terms, understand the quality and whether or not your embryo is viable versus non-viable, usable versus non-viable. It's kind of a metric system um, that allows you to better understand how the embryo is growing and progressing. Embryo quality is super important. It's something that we start taking notes on and making comments about from day zero all the way until day six. Anything abnormal regarding your embryo or oocytes, we do make comments in your chart, your paper chart, um, that reflect into EIVF and also reflect into you during your updates. If we think something is poor quality or abnormal, um, we do list that so that, you know, it's not just a bad turnout, um, there's more of an explanation and a reason why behind things happen. But when an oocyte is retrieved and stripped and assessed for maturation, there are three levels that we put those oocytes into. The lowest level being a GV, which is also known as a germinal vesicle. The second level would be an M1. So M1s and GVs are both immature. M1 is kind of the middle level. It's, um, and right above that, a mature oocyte is called an M2. There are other ways that we classify oocytes that don't refer to maturity, but refer to more embryo quality, which is sometimes referred to as an EZ, an empty zona, which is essentially um, a shell of an oocyte without an actual egg inside of it. Um, we could also make a note of something being called a shreddic, which another word for that is arrested or um, is inviable. Embryo grading is extremely important because it is the only way that we can assess um, an embryo in the lab. So if we don't have anything to go off of, what kind of data can we collect for the patient? Um, things like FERT rate, blast assist rate, viability rate, where does your embryo stop growing? Did it stop growing at FERT check? Did it stop growing on day four? Did the cells never compact? These things have specific roles inside of the embryo and it's important to understand what factors impacted a negative outcome. So without embryo grading, I think that as a diagnostic tool, it would leave a lot of people in the dark. Um, what would be the point of IVF if we didn't have embryo grading, we weren't able to somewhat identify factors that influence failed cycles. There are, depending on what day we're talking about, there are multiple parts of an embryo. Um, starting from, I would say, the most distinguishing part is going to be day one, which is fertilization check. Um, we wanna make sure there's presence of two polar bodies on that oocyte and the presence of two pronuclei. Um, so that's basic for day one. Um, next, we look at day three, which is where we start counting cells. So from day one, for check, your embryo is still a one cell oocyte. After it fertilizes, it cleaves, starting on day two, into two to four cells. By day three, it should be at least six cells or up. Sometimes people have faster growing eggs, depending on their age, or slower growing eggs. Um, so it could be closer to six, it could be closer to 12. We also can contribute to the fact that sometimes we also see compacting or more eula stage embryos on day three which means those cells have already started to compact together, which is sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad thing. Um, the next component would be day five and day six. This is when we can start distinguishing the two different most important features of an embryo. We have the trifectoderm, which is the cells that potentially become the placenta of an embryo, a baby, a central baby, and we have the inner cell mass. Um, both of those are graded with a letter system, um, A, B, and C, A being the best, C being the worst, and we do take into account how many cells we see. So a, a fully formed blastocyst should have around 120 so cells in the trifectoderm and the ICM 
can't be calculated because it's just so compact that it would be impossible for us to count those cells. We use a system called the Gardner system. Um, we did tweak it a little bit. We, make, we do something slightly different than the traditional way, um, but in order to grade an embryo accurately um, would be starting from day one, where we look for the presence of the pronuclei. Um, day three, we actually count the cells inside the embryo and report how many cells are seen. And then we use a grading system, one, two, and three. One being the best, three being the worst. And we also take into account something called fragmentation. So when those cells are cleaving as they grow, sometimes tiny fragments break off and cause fragmentation inside the embryo, completely normal, and eventually those pieces either get sucked into the compaction or pushed out when they become a blastocyst. Um, grades one, two, and three solely depend on the blastomeres, the cells inside the embryo, whether they are symmetrical or not symmetrical. Um, also, we take into account fragmentation, and we do that based on percentages. Less than 10%, over 25%, somewhere in the middle is where we'd like in layman's terms, pretty much where we look at the embryo and assess it at. Lastly is gonna be the blastocyst grading, which happens on day five, day six, sometimes day seven. So what we like to do is um, the trifectoderm and the ICM both use A, B, and C. A being the best, C being the worst. Um, so when you, get it, when you get a score from the embryologist as a final update, we also include a number in the beginning. So starting from number three, which is technically one step above an early blast, um, but it's already have cavitation happening inside the blastocele. And then it goes all the way up to six, which is a hatched out embryo. So that means it's completely hatched out of its shell. So we start with a number based on expansion, three, four, five, or six. And then we move on to the ICM grading, which would be A, B, or C, A being the best, C being the worst. And then we move into the ICM grading I'm sorry, the trifectoderm grading, which would again be A being the best, C being the worst, and that mainly solely is subjective to how many cells we see, whether they are hatching out of that shell, and expansion. Questions to ask in regards to grading would be what kind of scale they use to grade their embryos. If you can have that outlined for you, I think it would um, help you out a lot to understand the level of fragmentation, the level um, of viability. Um, it's also super important to take into consideration how many mature oocytes you're starting with and how many blasts you're ending up with. That percentage is pretty important when it comes to IVF labs and their statistics. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Have a great day. <laughs>